Welcome and thank you for joining me on my creative journey. My name is Riona Jacobs and I'm from Mossel Bay in South Africa. You can download the PDF line file free on my website if you want to paint along with me. The story that I'll be reading comes from Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales. The White Snake a long time ago there lived a king whose wisdom was noised abroad in all the country. Nothing remained long unknown to him, and it was as if the knowledge of hidden things was brought to him in the air. However, he had one curious custom. Every day at dinner, after the table had been cleared and everyone gone away, a trusty servant had to bring in one more dish. But it was covered up and the servant himself did not know what it was in it, what was in it. And no one else knew, for the king waited until he was quite alone before he uncovered the dish. This had gone on a long time, but at last there came a day when the servant couldn't restrain his curiosity no longer. But as he was carrying the dish away, he took it into his own room. As soon as he was, had fastened the door securely, he lifted the cover and there he saw a white snake lying in the dish. After seeing it, he could not resist the desire to taste it, and so he cut off a small piece and put it in his mouth. As soon as it touched his tongue, he heard outside the window a strange chorus of delicate voices. He went and listened and found that it was the sparrows talking together and telling each other all they had seen in the fields and woods. The virtue of the snake had given him the power to understand the speech of animals. Now it happened one day that the queen lost her most splendid ring and suspicion fell upon the trusty servant who had the general superintendence and he was accused of stealing it. The king summoned him to his presence and after many reproaches told him that if by the next day he was not able to name the thief, he should be considered guilty and punished. It was in vain that he, he protested his innocence. He could get no better sentence. In his uneasiness and anxiety, he went out into the courtyard and began, began to consider what he could do in so great a necessity. There sat the ducks by the running water and rested themselves and plumed themselves with their flat balls and held a comfortable chat. The servant stayed where he was and listened to them. They told how they had waddled about all yesterday morning and found good food. And then one of them said pitifully, Something lies very heavy in my craw. It is the ring that was lying under the queen's window. I swallowed it down in too great a hurry. Then the servant seized her by the neck, took her into the kitchen and said to the cook, Kill this one. She is quite ready for cooking. Yes, said the cook, weighing it in her hand. There will be no trouble of fattening this one. It has been ready ever so long. She then slipped up its neck, and when it was opened, the queen's ring was found in its crawl. The servant could now, now clearly prove his innocence, and in order to make up for the injustice he had suffered, the king permitted him to ask some favor for himself, and also promised him the place of greatest honor in the royal household. But the servant refused it and only asked for a horse and money for travelling, for he, he had a fancy to see the world and look about him a little. So his request was granted and he set out on his way. And one day he came to a pool of water by which he saw three fishes who had got entangled in the rushes and were panting for water. Although fishes are usually considered dumb creatures, he understood very well their lament that they were to perish so miserably. And as he had a compassionate heart, he dismounted from his horse and put the three fishes back in, again into the water. They quivered all over with joy, stretched out their heads and called out to him, We will remember and reward you because you have delivered us. He rode on and after a while he heard a small voice come up from the sand beneath his horse's feet. He listened and understood how an ant king was complaining. If only these men would keep off 
with the great awkward beasts. Here comes the stupid horse treading down my people with his hard hoofs. The man turned his horse to the side path and the ant king called out to him, We will remember and reward you. The path led him through a wood and there he saw a father raven and mother raven standing by the nest and throwing the young ones out. Off with you, young gallow birds, cried they. We cannot stuff you any more. You are big enough to fend for yourself. The poor young ravens lay on the ground, fluttering and beating the air with their pinions and crying. We are poor, helpless things. We cannot fend for ourselves. We cannot even fly. We can only die of hunger. Then the kind young man dismounted, killed his horse and his dagger, with his dagger, and left it to the young ravens for food. They came hopping up, feasted away at it, and cried, We will remember and reward you. So now he had to use his own legs, and when he had gone a long way, so now he had to use his own legs, and when he had gone a long way, he came to a great town. There was so much noise and thurring in the street, and there came a man on a horse who proclaimed, the king's daughter seeks a husband, but he who wishes to marry her must perform a difficult task, and if he cannot carry it through successfully, he must lose his life. Many had already tried, but had lost their lives in vain. The young man, when he saw the king's daughter, was so dazzled by her great beauty that he forgot all danger when the king went to the king and offered him as a wooer. Then he was led to the seaside, and a gold ring was throw in, thrown into the water before his eyes. Then the king told him that he must fetch the ring up again from the bottom of the sea, saying, If you come back without it, you shall be put under the waves again and again until you are drowned. Everyone pitied, pitied the handsome young man, but they went and left him alone by the sea. As he was standing on the shore and thinking of what he should do, there came three fishes swimming by, none other than those he had set free. The middle one had a mussel in his mouth, and he laid it on the strand at the young man's feet. And when he took it up and opened it, there was the gold ring inside. Full of joy, he carried it to the king and expected the promised reward. But the king's daughter, proud of her high birth, of her high birth despised him and set him another task to perform. She went out into the garden and strewed about over the grass ten sacks full of millet seed. By the time the sun rises in the morning, you must have picked up all these, she said, and not a grain must be wanting. The young man sat down in the garden and considered how it was possible to do the task, but he couldn't contrive nothing and stayed there feeling very sorrowful and expecting to be led to death at the break of day. But when the first beams of the sun fell on the garden and he saw that the ten sacks were all full, standing one by the other, and not even a grain was missing, the ant king had arrived in the night with his thousands of ants, and the grateful creatures had picked up all the mullet seeds and filled the sacks with great industry. The king's daughter came in herself into the garden and saw with astonishment that the young man had performed all that had been given him to do. But she could not let her proud heart melt, but said, Although he has completed the two tasks, he shall not be my bridegroom unless he brings me an apple from the tree of life. The young man did not know where the tree of life was and to be found, but he set out and went on and on as long as his legs could carry him. But he had no hope of finding it. When he had gone through three kingdoms, he came one evening to a wood and seated himself under a tree to go to sleep. But he heard a rustling in the burrows, and a golden apple fell into his hand. Immediately, three ravens flew towards him, perched on his knee and said, We are the three young ravens that you delivered from starving. When we grew big and heard that you were seeking the golden apple, we flew over the sea to the end of the earth where the, the tree of life stands and we fetched the apple.
full of joy, the young man set off on his way home and brought the golden apple to the king's beautiful daughter, who was without any further excuse. So they divided the apple of life and ate it together, and their hearts were filled with love, and they lived in undisturbed happiness to a great age. My paintings are for sale on my website as prints, postcards, bookmarks, greeting cards and even mugs. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you enjoyed the content. I post every Monday. See you soon.